My name's Ed Hoppe. I'm, I just turned 70, and uh, we have quite a history of cancer in, in our family. My father had prostate cancer, and now, now um, a year ago, just over a year ago, I found out that I had prostate cancer. It's been prevalent in our family. Great grandmother, both grandmothers. I've had uh, multiple aunts, cousins. I have two sisters pass away from ovarian cancer. Another sister had lung cancer and she's been treated for it. I think um, both my mother's sisters died from cancer too. In the spring of last year, uh, I went in for my test. They do check for my, my PSA levels and my PSA level was elevated and uh, he recommended that I go uh, Arkansas Urology, and I, I got to see Dr. Goodson. I'm Tim Goodson. Uh, I practice urology at Arkansas Urology here in Little Rock, Arkansas. Ed was uh, referred um, uh, from Dr. Raymond Edwards uh, to my practice uh, with a uh, recent uh, PSA uh, blood test that showed an elevation. We did a prostate biopsy. We met uh, early on, uh, probably within the first week to give him the surgical pathology results and that, you know, we told him we had prostate cancer. At that point, I did not have the Polaris te test back. I thought this was, you know, uh, the first stage for me, you know. I, I guess my thoughts were how long, how long do I have? And... This uh, genetic test um, uh, called the Polaris test uh, is a way to grade how aggressive a, a particular cancer is uh, at, based on the genetic level. After the Polaris and we knew the aggressiveness of it, then we, you know, it was like, okay, what, what do we want to do then? Uh, given the aggressive scale of his Polaris results, uh, I recommended, uh, you know, definitive treatment uh, and outlined options, uh, including uh, radiation uh, with hormone deprivation therapy. I got some pretty good feedback from people I know that have had the treatment and I, I decided that's the way I wanted to go. Given his family history and his grade of disease, we wanted to get the my risk test to uh, determine if he had a hereditary uh, trait. His uh, BRCA1 gene was positive, which you know labels him as a hereditary cancer uh, patient, which has implications uh, not only for him, uh, but for sons and daughters. Uh, in Ed's case, he has two daughters. Both of them uh, have turned out to be uh, BRCA1 gene positive. Uh, so their risk uh, moving forward of uh, breast cancer and ovarian cancer are significant. It affected my family as much as it affected just me. My, my two daughters have since learned that they're, they were positive. We believe that this ought to be obtained on anyone that has an intermediate grade or higher uh, prostate cancer. Some genes, if they are positive, influence the appropriateness of certain therapies, uh, chemotherapy in particular. So if we have an advanced pro case of prostate cancer, um, if they are uh, positive for certain genes that are part of the MyRisk panel, then uh, certain treatment plans will, will be taken off the table. Uh, they are not appropriate because the studies have shown that they are ineffective for those cancers. You know, when I reached 70, I was thinking, I, you know, I've, I've outlived my father now, you know. And I wondered if I'd ever do that. So I'm glad I was, you know, ha had this available and that I, I certainly wish he had it available to him. Like a pebble in a pond, you know, the ripples keep on coming out. And in fact, you know, there's 46 people in Ed's extended family that may benefit from this information. This information can result in uh, each individual family member uh, being more attuned and um, make sure that they get proper screening uh, for the cancers that they are at risk of, of uh, developing. We love to have patients come in prepared with a good family history. This gives us critical information uh, that we need moving forward to plan their care. And I'm glad it's there and it's a good, good to catch things on the front end. Knowledge is power, I think somebody said. <laughs>